Alison Sargent joins me on the set for the press review today. Hi, Alison. Hi, Jeannie. Lots of focus, of course, on the results of that report from Special Counsel Robert Mueller in the United States, where he said there was no collusion between Russia and the Trump campaign. That's right, Jeannie. Undeniably, good news for the U.S. president. Um, Left-wing tabloid The New York Daily News is reviving an old nickname for Donald Trump, Teflon Donald, on their front page today. This idea that nothing sticks to the president, somehow he manages to get away with everything. Uh, still, the paper emphasizes the point that while Mueller didn't find collusion, he did say that he couldn't exonerate the president of obstruction of justice. So it's not the total exoneration that Trump is claiming it to be. The New York Times emphasizes this as well, although the paper's main headline on their front page today is the fact that no conspiracy was found. They reprint parts of the letter that was sent to Congress from the U.S. Attorney General, and in their editorial they call it a Trump-friendly letter that doesn't do justice, they say, to the Mueller report. The New York Times and the Washington Post, the United States' two main left-wing papers, are both calling for that report's full release to the public. Allison, one thing that most papers seem to agree on, whether they're left-wing or conservative, is that this report is good news for the American public. That's right. The New York Times and the Wall Street Journal both say that it is a good thing that a U.S. presidential candidate was not found to be conspiring with Russian, Russian President Vladimir Putin. That, they say, would have been very bad for American democracy. Um, still, the Wall Street Journal says that the real reason Americans should be happy is that the collusion illusion, as they call it, is finally over. In the words of the Wall Street Journal, the Trump-Russia collusion was a conspiracy theory that has dominated American politics for more than two years. Many conservatives and even some on the left are really blaming the media for overhyping the Russian investigation. Um, one writer argued that Russia Gate is this generation's weapons of mass destruction, which is a reference to the news coverage that led up to the Iraq war. Um, political, Politico writes that that was widely seen as the greatest journalistic failure in modern memory. Alison, here in France, many papers are looking at the massacre that took place over the weekend in central Mali. All right, France's Catholic paper La Croix talks about a kindling of sectarian conflict. Uh, the over 100 villagers who were killed were from the Fulani community. Those who attacked them were believed to be hunters from the Dogon community. La Croix explains here that the presence of jihadist groups in this area has been intensifying the regular territorial conflicts between the region's various groups. Uh, that's because jihadist groups have primarily been recruiting men from the Fulani community. As a result, people are starting to draw a false equivalency between jihadists jihadists and Fulani people. Um, one researcher told French paper Liberation that rival communities are actually using the excuse of fighting against jihadists as a pretext to completely eradicate the Fulani people from the area. Um, this researcher says it's time to talk about the violence as an ethnic cleansing. All right, let's uh, go to Europe now for a quick word on Brexit. Rumors are swirling of a coup against the British Prime Minister. That's right. Over the weekend, papers were reporting that Theresa May's cabinet was plotting to oust her and install a caretaker prime minister. Today, tabloid The Sun is calling Time's Up on Theresa May. The paper writes that she must promise to stand down as soon as her Brexit deal is approved. Now, one man who would like to replace her is Brexiteer Boris Johnson. You see him there on the front page of the Daily Telegraph. He says it's time for the prime minister to tell the pharaoh in Brussels to let my people go. A fun Moses metaphor for us today. Um, he also calls Theresa May a chicken in an editorial published in the paper. And we can actually see Theresa May drawn as a chicken in the Times cartoon today, although her ministers there are the ones who are really being the chickens about going in and ousting her. They're all daring each other to go into the coop first. The cartoonist Morton Moreland calls it a chicken coup. All right, let's wrap up now in Ukraine, where a presidential candidate in the election this Sunday is using his campaign to find a wife. He is. The Washington Post calls it the political version of The Bachelor. And you can see um, a photo of this eligible bachelor on one of his campaign posters here. His name is Ihor Shevchenko, 48 years old, not so bad looking. Um, this poster reads, do you want to become the wife of a president? Well, for about 300 women, the answer was yes. Um, that's how many women submitted applications online. Shevchenko is going to choose a spouse from among them. This entire thing is going to be filmed and then, just like The Bachelor, and then broadcast on Facebook and YouTube. 
YouTube. Shevchenko is a minor candidate with little chance of winning the election, so you might think that maybe this is all just a stunt to raise awareness about his name. He swears, though, that it's much more than that. He says he really hopes to find true love. Well, let, let's wish him the best with that. <laughs> Allison, thank you for that. Allison Sargent there with that look at the papers today. Uh, thanks to you for watching as well. Don't forget, you can always get a closer look at any of the stories we're covering for you throughout the day on our website. That address, France24.com.